Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Jesse here. I know you're enjoying our YouTube videos. People say it all the time, comments. So like this video and subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you will know when we post new content. That's like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Now watch this and be blessed. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Jesse Duplantis. And I'm Kathy Duplantis, and we want to welcome you to our boardroom chat. Oh, I tell you what, we have, we have a wonderful time. You know, I I've said this many times, but it weren't saying it again. We get so many compliments and comments on these boardroom chats from all over the world. I think it's one of our more popular things that are I going think it on is. right I now. Mean, I wonder why it makes us together. We're a dynamic duo. Oh, yeah, glory <laughs> to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Jesus. A little fist bump, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Praise God. I mean, it's just such a blessing. And for once in my life, I believe the boardroom chats was my idea, wasn't it? No. It was not my idea. You, you do that a lot, though. I try to you believe. You take I ownership it was. of every oh, yeah. thought that becomes a good one. <laughs> well, well, every. That's okay. <laughs> it's okay. We're glad you just well, do it. Well, whose idea was it? George's? George. It yeah. was George's George idea. George mentioned okay. it to me, and then you, you said, okay, I'll do it, but Kathy, you have to do it with me. That's what I said? Yes, you did. Did I make you a mistake? You came kicking and screaming like everything did else. Did I make a mistake when I said that? Well... No. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm glad. I said, okay, I'll do it. I just, I knew it was important because that was at the time when COVID had just hit. You weren't traveling, and we knew that people all over the world needed spirit. They needed encouragement. They needed to be prayed for. And uh, we, we just went week by week, think, letting the Holy Spirit lead us on what subject we would take. And Amen. What we talk hey, about, hey. We all, it's always based on the word, but we talk about practical examples. And, Amen. And we always read testimonies too. And it was amazing is that we don't study for these things. We shoot from the hip. Uh, you know, we just get a thought, and I mean, usually come walking in. That's uh, his. That's his statement. But I like to say we're led by the Holy. Oh Ghost. Well, yes, but that's what I mean Shoot by from that. The hip. Normally, you know, if you're going into the pulpit, you're going to study. You know, you you and you should, because well, the Bible says study to show the self approved unto God. That's not there. But this thing is, is uh, uh, it's the Holy Ghost guiding it and directing it, but it's off the cuff. You know, just whatever we're going to talk right. about. But before I get into it today, I want you to read a few of those boardroom testimonies. These are things that you sent in. And this is how we know that you're watching it and if you like it or dislike it. And we've had some people write in some stuff and they didn't like it. And that's okay. And we tell them just to keep watching. See what I'm saying? Because, we, you know, I, we're not perfect, but we're close. No, I'm just, <laughs> I just thought I'd say that. But God, anyway. God sees us as perfect. Oh, yeah. He, he does. sees the end before the beginning. Amen. Like you often say. To so read a couple of these testimonies. Let's see what's happening. Renee says, I love you too. You bring such joy and laughter, even when expounding the word of God. Lots of love from Outback, Northwest Australia, which we're about to go. We're to coming Australia. to Australia in the, in the month of May. Yes. Look at the uh, online and you'll see yes. all the dates. We want to make sure you go and, and we, we get, get to, see to meet you, you in person. And that would be nice. Be awesome. This one uh, says, Yini says, watching from Singapore, I thank God daily for you both. Thank you for preaching the word of God without compromising. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know, my brother who's now in heaven, he was stationed one time in Singapore. He said he really liked Singapore. I've never been he to Singapore. He was there for several years. His yeah. whole family was yeah. there. And, um, yeah, we ought to go to Singapore. Go preach at a church there or something or run a, run a convention center or something and just do a meeting there because I heard it was a very beautiful city. You know, Singapore. Praise God. And it's English speaking, so we wouldn't have to yeah, preach be, through an nice. interpreter, which yeah. is always better. I mean, better. we can do it, you know, but we, we like just using yeah, our own language past, if possible. Last month when we went to uh, Switzerland for the first time, I spoke through an interpreter. Right. Yeah, I, I loved it. Huh? It wasn't as hard as I... No, I, I mean... You, the Lord you, helped me. You're preaching sentences, you know, you, have you a just good don't interpreter, go flying. That's the issue. Yeah, the whole key to that is a good interpreter. <laughs> go ahead, Kathy. And Moses says, watching from Bungamba, Kenya... Who, who said that? Moses. Moses. Got a good uh, name. Uh, yes, indeed. Abraham, another good name, says, joining from Chinya, India. Ah. And then... Uh, Elizar, watching from Fiji Island, love the boardroom chats. Praise God. Diana says, hi from Romania. Fionzo, I think I'm saying that one right, uh -huh. watching from South Africa. So I tell a you lot what, of nations all over the world. are tuning it's in. It's amazing. Keep yeah. on, yeah. This one's from Lynette. I'm not sure where they're from. Let me see. How, I don't think it says it in the letter. It says, praise God. Brother Jerry is praising God in heaven. I was saddened to hear the news Monday, and I will miss him at Fort Worth Believers Convention. Thank the Lord. I have lots of DVDs that I can still watch. Precious man of God. I'm praying for his lovely family. I love watching you and Sister Kathy on boardroom chats and Faith the Facts. 
Y'all are part of my day every day. So very thankful I can be a partner in your ministry. You know, last week blessing. during our chat, we we made that announcement and talked about right. our dear friend passing, uh, arriving in heaven. Yes, I, 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 Jerry has not passed, he's arrived. And for some of you that don't know that, one of the greatest men God ever put in shoe leather, went home, be, be with the Lord, uh, uh, Dr. Jerry Savelle, who was a personal friend of mine, almost like a brother. Even though we weren't related, we were related in the spirit so close that we all, we, we, People really, literally thought that we were brothers, you know, and things like that Well, y'all look nature. a little bit alike because y'all are pretty close to the same height. He's, yeah. you just no, I'm a little hair, taller than A hair him. taller, as and they say. And not much, not much. But I mean, he would say, people say, I, I can't hardly tell the difference. I would say, well, he's the skinny one and I'm the fat one, you know what I'm saying? I said, that's pretty simple, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, Go ahead, finish it up. Okay, Todd says, my nine-year-old, this one I love, loves, likes your Merry Heart series so much that you could press mute and he will continue saying all the words <laughs> with your expressions. Isn't that a blessing to God? Thank you. <laughs> I love that. And the last one, well, on this page, it says, no sad days when I listen to you happy people. I enjoy laughing with my grown children. Thank Praise you. Praise God. Amen. Go ahead, get this. Two oh, you more? Want to, two yeah. more? You want to read this? Yeah, one? I mean, I like I'm going to read just this last one here. This is your partner in Pennsylvania still watching. What a blessing of the Lord to be mentioned and just today to have received a letter from your ministry. You, you were my two and the depression has lifted. Bless God, you are my father in the faith, and I, I will miss Brother Savelle, amazing general of God. Thank you, JDM. Thank you, Jesse and Kathy. Honored to be your partner. They, when they say, I'll be your two, we have a, we have a statement that yeah. we say, I'll be you two means we're two or more agree as touching anything is done by a father. So you need someone to agree, and this is what he's and saying. I want to thank you, you for being two. a partner, too. What a blessing yes. of God. You know, these things are all funded by you, lock, stock, and barrel, and by me and Kathy. You know, we don't ask people to give. We give ourselves. I mean, we are partners to this ministry because we know, without sounding arrogant, the depth of it, what God has called us to do. Amen. So I want to thank all the partners up front for all that you do. Because everything you see on this set, a partner has bought all this. And, and, and I mean, you sent us to preach this glorious gospel. But you know, me and Kathy, from the day one we got born again, we would never ask anybody to do something we would not do. So we are partners in this ministry just like you are. And some people have told me, well, you know, you're giving to yourself. No, I'm not. There's a vast difference between Jesse the Planets, me and Kathy, than there's Jesse the Planets Ministries. That's a whole nother ball game, see? So if you'd like to be a partner, we'd love to have you in our team, in, in our Holy Ghost gang, like we call it. All you got to do is go to jdm.org. That's our website. And you can hit a donate button if you want to. Or you can use PayPal if you'd like to do that. Or you can text to give a one-time donation or a recurring one if you want. Oh, Kathy likes this, and she likes the JDM apps. You, know, you can choose and select the giving you like. Or you can do like I do. You just can mail in an old-fashioned check uh, to the ministry, which I do, you know, those kind of things. And uh, So we just ask you to do that because we've asked the Lord for every dollar given to our ministry to give us a soul into the kingdom. And I've said this so many times, but I love saying it. 100% of what you give goes into world evangelism. Me and Kathy has been debt-free since 1982. We have no concept of debt. We pay no interest on bank loans or anything of that, none whatsoever at all. So if you send $20 in a month, the whole $20 goes to World Evangelism. We've got people sending $10,000 a month. We've got some that have sent $100,000, some send millions. And, you know, people don't give like that unless they trust you. And you know what? They trust us, and it's just such a blessing of God. So thank you for being a partner in advance. And, it, and, if, and tell some people about us, and, and maybe they may want to become a partner. And we're not try, trying to get money from you. We want to get money to you because the anointing of increase is on our lives. It is oh, on me. Right. And I mean that sincerely. When I say on me, the hundredfold anointing is on me. And I want it to come upon you. Yeah. And it will bless you. So thank you. Yeah, you but, said you something, something that reminded me of this last testimony, but yeah. I wanted to share okay. it here. The one that we have here it says, Maureen says, Hey, Jesse and Kathy, our beloved Jerry Savelle is not in our past. He's in our future. Heaven gained, but yes, he will be so greatly missed. I'm praying for comfort for his family with you all. And then he goes on to say, I watch you continually, Jesse, and my faith in the Lord has been soaring like eagles. I tell everyone I meet about Jesus and encourage them to listen to you and Kathy. I promise them that if they do watch, their lives will never be the same again. I give your books away too. Blessed and highly favored to be a partner with you all. Together we are reaching people and changing lives one soul at a time. Oh, that's one of my famous right. statements. You know, that's mm -hmm. what we do. Well, that's our th that's our vision statement, that's actually, right. for the well, ministry. Changing, it's yeah, everywhere. One soul at a time. I don't care how big it gets. And I'll tell you what, we preach to a lot of people in the millions. Actually, 
2.3 billion people on broadcast television literally all over the world. And lives are being changed. Oh, That's why constantly. we love reading your testimonies. I told the Lord this. I said, look, I will work until you come. I'll go by the way of the grave. But I'm not going out there by myself. I want you to be with it. He said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. Boy, and we've walked some really crowded roads together, me and the Lord, and we've walked some lonely ones. You know, mm -hmm. just us, you know. But that was all right. God is so good. I want to get into something. In fact, I, we were flying back home last night from a service that we had preached. And um, the, our Faith to Facts this week, uh, you know, we, we talked about obedience. And uh, it was such a blessing. And uh, I, I'm not finished yet on obedience. Mm -hmm. And uh, so as I was thinking about it, because the Faith of Facts is a little five-minute segment. So I'd like you, after you watch this, to go back this week and, and, and listen to that little five-minute Faith of Facts. But I want to talk about obedience again. There's a scripture in the Bible that said it's better to obey than the sacrifice. And I want to get into that. Now, let me tell you where it's at. It's 1 Samuel chapter 15, uh, verse 22. And, and Saul has made a mistake because he sees this money and he thinks, well, you know, I'm going to just take these sheep and all this kind of stuff and make sacrifices unto the Lord. Well, when he actually what he wanted was he wanted that wealth because that was wealth back in those days. And Samuel caught him and said this in verse 23. And Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. In other words, we have been taught all our church lives, I don't care if you're Protestant, Jewish, Catholic, Whatever. You got to sacrifice. Suffer, 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 suffer. suffer. And, and, and we do suffer for the Lord, but not the way they think we do. That doesn't mean the devil hadn't come, come, won't come against us. But God said this, it's better to obey. To obey. People say, well, you know the first church. Well, you know the first church is the foundation. All the weight of this building right now that we're in, this studio, is all the weight of us on this foundation. But you're not the foundation of the church. You're the roof of the church. You understand? Know so the lightest part of this gospel is actually on us because we're at the roof. You see what I'm saying? But it's always so much better to obey, whether it be spiritual, physical, or financial. You really know a person's heart by how they obey. That's why, you know, uh, they put that in the marriage vows, to obey. Now, most people think that's just for the woman, and that's not. I mean, I've said that before. It's for both of you to obey each other and obey the Lord. Now, there's some things God has told me and Catherine to do that I, I don't know about Catherine. I didn't want to do them. I thought, man, my days, man, I'm going to catch all kind of flack on this stuff. But I did. And I found out later on that it was the best thing I ever did. Even though it didn't look right, it didn't smell right, it didn't feel right, you know. Or it wasn't a rim of my five senses, but learning to obey God's word. Now, I don't know about some people. A lot of people struggle to be saved. And I want you to listen to what I'm saying. When you learn obedience, you don't struggle to be saved. I mean, I just enjoy being saved. I'm not missing out on nothing in the world by being saved. I think sometimes the devil tells people, you know, if you get saved, you're going to miss out a lot in your life. And I don't walk in bondage in any way, shape, or form. I don't let people put me under bondage. There's a scripture in the book of Acts where I love what the Apostle Paul, what God said to the Apostle Paul. He said, I have delivered you from the people. Mm. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I've been delivered from people. I'm going to tell you what I believe. I'm going to tell you what I think. And then it's up to you to believe it. I mean... I'm not going to force you to believe it. I'm not going to judge you if you don't believe it. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to say what the Lord says because I know what he says is always right. Mm -hmm. Better to obey than to sacrifice. You know, and that was really Samuel's, uh, I mean, Saul's response when That's Samuel right. rebu rebuked him. Uh -huh. He says, because I feared the people. And what he did was he did things his way rather than God's way. God had a way to do the sacrifice and it was the priest's responsibility. Mm -hmm. Samuel took on that a holy responsibility for right. himself, sure. thought that he could, but God had a plan that only the priest would. So when, because Samuel got there a little later than Saul wanted him to be, he, right. he was, you know, it's all, all we, about timing. Yeah, People rush is. ahead of God. It's, you know, you got to stay right on and in step with God. Don't go ahead. Don't lag backward. But here, this was what uh, Saul lost his kingdom then. Right. He, uh, Samuel said, God's retting, taking the kingdom away from you because you're not a good leader. You're not obeying God. You're trying to do things your own way. And because of that, he lost it all. The kingdom was rent from him. Yeah. I mean, it's just amazing to me. You got to understand, obedience is not hard. You know, it, it isn't. You know, there's a word called stubborn, and most people use it in, in a, a, a mean way. That boy is stubborn. How about be stubborn to obey? 
that you refuse not to obey. That's a tenacity. That's, yeah. a, that's the word that you stick on right. there. It's like, like a, a bulldog Well, you know, faith. when Jody... Bulldog would, faith. Yeah, it latches you, on itself. Yeah. Because a bulldog, when they bite they down bite, on something... They bite and bite. They're not letting go. Well, when Jody was little, and we'd be maybe in a mall going somewhere, Kathy would say, stay with me, Jody. Jody was the kind of kid like to go run off somewhere and look at this and look at that and all that kind of stuff. So Kathy would say, uh, stay close to me. Stay. And, you know, and so, you know, so we, you know, we wouldn't lose her. It's amazing, you know, and, uh, and sometimes she did and sometimes she didn't. And I tell people all the time, that's okay. You know, sometimes, you know, you might run off and I'll be running right behind you. i never forget the first time we went to Niagara Falls. You remember that? I had never seen Niagara Falls in my life. And the prettiest part of the falls is actually on the Canada side. It's called the Horseshoe Falls. Then you got the American side, which is the American Falls. And so we went over, and that's when you didn't have to have a, you didn't have to go through all kind of customs. That showed your driver's license, boom, you, you just went across the uh, the bridge right there, and and you could get so close to these falls. When I say close, I'm talking three foot, four foot. Of course, there was a, a fence right there, and uh, but it was just amazing. It's to such see a that. spectacular sight oh, that you find phenomenal. yourself just getting closer. So you can really comprehend how deep is that water. Look how clear it is. I mean, it was Look amazing. Look how fast it's coming. Over. Look at the mist. So you're getting closer and closer, not realizing that you're right there at the rail. I remember that somebody had to come up. Was it you or me? What's or, that? The rail, we got too close to the yeah, rail. They yeah, and they, they said, oh, because if you close. slip, I mean, uh, you know, you probably, the, the fence would have probably caught you. Maybe. You see, so, I mean, but it was just, a, well, Jody was running all over the place, and, and I'd be after, you know, because I wanted to see that. And she wasn't too impressed about the mall, about the falls, you know. She was just enjoying herself. And, and you know, just running and, and, and playing. But, man, me and Kathy, we were, what's well, called one of the seven wonders of the world. We were amazed how that thing, and it's still falling right now. Jody's 52 and not when she was three. See oh, what I'm saying? she was two. So was she two years old then? I mean, it was just amazing to see that. The power of it. And there was a boat, something called something of the mist, sea of the mist. Mm -hmm. And it would go into the fall. Well, I don't, I don't think it would let the water hit them, but it gets where you couldn't no, see it, them. That, no, that, uh, that, that went, mist would just it where just oh, the man. mist would hit them, not the water itself. Yeah. The water came oh, down right. with such a force that it had several feet of just the mist of it. And you have, if you were in that boat, you would have to wear a raincoat. Oh, yeah, you got soaking wet. We went like under a little cave area. That was you really went under fun. the fall. And we went yeah. under it. We kind of, kind of see it falling in yeah, this cave it was space. Amazing. We still had to wear uh, rain gear. But you know what we you. had to do? What? We had to obey what those people told us to do. Right. Do it their way. something that is so beautiful we can, can become so dangerous, all of a sudden you can lose your that life. Was real power. Yep. Very, that, in fact, that kind that, of power that comes over ooh. that falls, I think, generates all of New York City, yeah, doesn't it? Yeah, oh, somewhere in New York. I mean, a lot, a lot of electrical of New York, power. It perver yeah. I mean, it was just amazing. But we had to obey. And you know, people were so nice to us when you obey. But when you quit obeying and start going into danger, they'd holler at you. And, and, and not in a nice way, because they had to get your attention. Because nature is beautiful, but it will kill you if you just go the wrong way at the wrong time. Well, it's the same way with living for the Lord Jesus Christ. If you obey, I don't care how many devils are around you. I don't care how bad it gets if you obey mm -hmm. and put on that whole armor of God. God will have angels around you. He will take care of you and honor you. But you got to obey. I tell people all the time, you know, uh, God has a judgment side to him. He really does. But if you obey him, you never see it. I've said this so many times, I'll say it again. You have a judgment side to you. But if your children obey you, they will never see it. I used to tell that to Jody, she was going to, you know, if you just, obey, I always told her, obey your mama. Whatever your mama said, they do it. You understand? Yeah, but Daddy, you don't do it. Well, uh, you know, sometimes I do it. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I didn't want to do what Kathy wanted me to do or something like that. She shocked me so much this morning, I, I couldn't believe it. I got off on my uh, treadmill. Man, I'm sweating like a Missouri mule. I'm sitting there. I don't know why Missouri mules sweat more than other mules, but boy, I was sweating, you know. <laughs> and, uh, and I was just sitting there. I said, well, let me get in a walk back. And I always usually make that bed for some reason. I don't know why. And we got a beautiful bed. It took me 10 years to find it. Uh, King Louis XVIII slept in that bed, glory to God, and so did Kathy the Planets. But anyway, hallelujah, I walked in the room and the bed was made. I thought, Jesus. I said, so I just walked into her bathroom and she was getting ready, you know, to come here. I said, you made the bed. She had a smile, I guess. That, yes. Why is that a big deal? Well, because you never do it. Oh, I do do it. <laughs> That's why it's not a big deal. Well, it a great while, you know. I'll, I let, think you, you I'll let you do it Oh, you let you me. I, she lets me, you know. And uh, We've <laughs> always learned something. That uh, you're a good person if you get up and make your bed. 
I mean, immediately you begin to, you settle in your, you know, what you're going to do. You know, your discipline and your thinking and what you're going to do, that, that kind of stuff. Like when it comes time for Kathy to preach, I can't talk to her. She don't want me talking to her. You know how many people want to talk to me? How many times I told her that? You know how many people are standing in line, calling, want to talk to me? But she'll say, I'm studying. Go away. <laughs> so I just go away. I just obey. And then if I don't go away fast enough, she slams her Bible closed, gets up, and takes off, ex- and goes to another room. You're exaggerating. I'm not exaggerating. That's a fact. Yeah. Hallelujah. I mean, but I, I get the picture. In other words, she's got her mind on something. And that's a good thing, you know, there's nothing wrong with that, you know. And it's such a blessing. So obedience is one of the greatest things anybody can walk through. Yeah, and you see with the story you're telling here, really God had told, uh, through the prophet Samuel, told Saul to smite in verse 3 of that same chapter. Now go, he says, and smite Amalek and utterly Uh destroy all that they have and spare them not, but slay both man and woman, infant, suckling, ox, sheep, camel, and ass. But he saved the best of it. Because like you said, he was going after the money. He, he wasn't listening, money. trying to make an excuse. And he said, oh, it's the people that made me do it. Yeah. He was, and I'm going to offer he sacrifices never, he never to God. He never owned his mistake. Yeah. That's so the problem with he a lot was, of Not people. only was he disobedient, he was dishonest. Yeah. i never forget one time I, I used to travel Sunday through Wednesday. Everybody had Sunday through Wednesday meetings. This is 40 years ago, 45 years ago. And I came home one time and Kathy was a little angry. And I said, what's the problem? You make it she, sound like I'm angry all the oh, time. No, I didn't say that. Just one thing, you know. I mean, you've told two or three angry stories. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, stories. you can remember when Kathy gets angry. I mean, it's a it's a very prominent situation. When she, you know, and, and she's normally quiet, but she ain't quiet when she gets angry. So I come walking through the door and she goes, hmm, got the hand on that hip. Jody, I, Jody was not good today. And I mean, I never told Jody no. She's 52. I haven't told her no yet. But, you know, because I just God, I was not good at it. She said, I want you to go in there and get her and spank her. Oh, no, I can't do that. So I thought, but Kathy had that eyebrow up like this. She looked like Dracula, you know. Bella Lugosa, the old Dracula. I said, oh, Jesus. I said, okay. I said, all right. I said, Jody, come here, boy. Jody's little eyes. Man, Jody got beautiful face, beautiful eyes, you know. I said, get in that bedroom. Get me that belt. Also, Kathy, I closed the door. And Jody's looking like that. I said, now listen, come here. I said, I'm going to hit this bed with this belt. You holler hard. hard yeah? I ain't going to hit you. I'm just hit the bed and I'm going to holler. But you just holler loud yourself. She said, okay, Dad. I said, now, and don't you ever tell your mama. You understand? Know so, man, I hit the bed. Ah! Oh, and I said, I told you, you better listen to your mama. Bam! And I hit the bed. Oh! And Kathy was on the other side. Don't hit her too hard. All that kind of stuff. And both of them, between the legs, we're going, just laughing up a storm. And uh, so finally I opened up the door. Whatever it was, it worked. I it was, worked. I'm okay with that. I didn't, I didn't spank her like that. She, I just, no, I, I, would, I didn't either. I would swat her, but I mean, that was a, oh. I don't know what exactly happened that time, but she generally was a good kid. But oh, yeah. I needed reinforcements because <laughs> yeah. I was the, the lone disciplinarian That's all true. the time. All the time. Like. All Jesse the time. only had uh, two answers, yes, and ask your mother. So <laughs> ask your mother usually was his way of saying, interpreting. And I, I, you know, I don't know how young. So I was the bad guy. I don't know how young girls That's not dress. Right. She said, Dad, let's go to the mall. This is like 12 or 13, and they want to wear makeup, you know, and, you know, they, they, they won't go outside unless they're perfect, you know, that kind of stuff. So we go to the mall, and uh, so Jody picks this outfit, and, go, and Kathy goes, oh, no. Oh, no. You're not wearing that. makes you look too old. You're going to dress your age. You're going to dress your age. And I, I looked at it, and, and, and Jody said, well, Dad, what do you think? I said, I think you look like a million bucks. <laughs> I'd buy the thing. And that's kind of, I mean, smoke coming off. But I never thought of her dressing her age. What does that mean? You know what I'm saying? But, you know, Kathy was smarter than I was on that kind of stuff. I said, we're going to have to obey your mama. I said, you know, you know, I said, you know, we both got to live with it. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> so, so I said, you know, let's obey, you know. And, uh, and, and, and so she did. But every once in a while, I'd turn around and say, oh, Kathy, let the kid have the dress for God's sake, you know. And if any boy looks at it the wrong way, I'll knock him out. You know what I mean? I handle it, that kind of stuff. Because I just wanted her happy. 
You just and couldn't say no. I could not say no. Are you a noodle? I was a noodle. I, I mean, I, I, I was. <laughs> You know, she I, had I, you wrapped around. Oh, her she had me totally wrapped. And I that's looked not good like for a piece her. of bacon on a piece of chicken. That's, I was wrapped that, around. That's not good for her. We, I wanted to do what was good for her, not just what she wanted. Yeah, but I, I, did, I was stubborn. Did you think? Oh, mother. yeah, she was. She, she and uh, was. if it was right, you know, if I said no, it no had to be reinforced, and right. I wanted you to reinforce me. Well, I did, I didn't? Know. Most of the time. Well, was it? I, I just, I said, man, listen, Jody. I said, your mama got an old ugly ways. <laughs> You, she said, that's not I said, right. but I know it was not right. good parenting. Uh, that's not good parenting. I got to agree. I would say, that. she got an old ugly way. I said, but look at you, daddy. He's got some old, not many of them, but he's got very few ugly ways. <laughs> I said, but you know what? We got to have peace in the house. I said, look at Bojack. See the dog? The dog knows when, uh, when your mama's mad. Even the dog go, hmm. <laughs> Bojack, take, take off. Because when Kathy gets hot, son, we all get out the house. One time, me, Bojack, and Jody, we were standing on the front porch. She's still mad in there. <laughs> she mad about something. Because we were not obeying what she wanted done. And she wasn't asking something hard. That's the truth. I'm sure not, that's the truth. <laughs> yeah, she was not. <laughs> but, buddy, she wanted us to get in line, you know, and things of that nature. And we did. Man. So, so, my God, I see we walked in like soldiers. Even Bojack had his little tailor. <laughs> he just walked. You know, Bojack was our little dog, you know, that kind of poodle. stuff. A poodle, yeah. That dog was the smartest dog I've seen. It's he smart. learned to spell. <laughs> he just learned everything. Yeah, because when, when I would, when it was time to give him a bath, I'd say, Jesse, grab Bojack. I want to, I need to give him a bath. And you, after a while, he, he learned the word. <laughs> he'd, take off. he'd hear me say the word bath, he'd go hide under the sofa. <laughs> yeah. And then after, so after a while, I said, Jesse, grab Bojack. Go, I want to give him a B A T H. First cup, first time it was okay. But after that, he learned to spell. He B-A-T-H. learned to spell. B-A-T-H. He took off, son, like that. <laughs> I mean, it was brutal That's a with smart Kathy. Dog. Kathy. Yes, you would, you know, you wash your dog, not Kathy. Kathy pick him up by the tail. He's just hanging. Gotta clean I mean, everything. Just, Gotta mean, clean everything. Now he sure smelled good. He looked, I mean, he looked like a million bucks when Kathy was finished with him, you know, and stuff like that. And he'd come out of the bathroom. I have bath, to, because he's I, always look dragging at his behind on yeah, the car. I know, he, I didn't like that neither. But I mean, he would come out that bathroom. <laughs> And he'd go, <laughs> like, it's over. Praise God. It was just so funny like that. It was a blessing. We, we'd you know? saying too much. But, uh, and, but I'm going to tell you something, man. He, he had to learn to obey. Yes, he did. He did. And, and you he know, did so, good. And he did good. He was and a blessing. And when he did, he got a treat. Yeah, he got a treat. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it was and not God what I... rewards in the same way. Let's get back on. God rewards well, no. obedience. I, that's what I'm he trying does. to get to. I'm on the, I'm Hebrews on the subject. Hebrews tells us how God Better is to a, obey. Right. I love the... In Hebrews, let me go there. Hebrews chapter 11, we can switch over and get off of me for a get while. Get off of her, you know. Hebrew- Kathy has a whole lifetime, man. You yes. believe some of the stuff this morning. Hebrews cha- <laughs> chapter uh, 11, verse 6 says, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. How many him? times I've quoted that to you about me? He that cometh to Jesse. <laughs> is it possible? I don't remember you ever Is a rewarder, it. and I would reward her. You I don't know? remember you ever telling oh, yeah. me that. You don't remember? I said, okay, let me just pray for you. Not yeah. quite that way, not the way this. <laughs> yes. I know right. you want me to please you. Yes. Uh, yes. But why not? I mean, you know, hey. Yeah, and I know you want to please me. Sure. And why not? It's just and such not? a And why not? It's just such a blessing. Now, it's the kind of man, me, the kind of life that we have, uh, it's really kind of amazing. Um, I can eat in the same place every day. This woman cannot do that. We were there yesterday. <laughs> I said, well, whoopie do. <laughs> Why can't we go there today? You know, but, uh, uh, you know. I like variety. That's right. She does. You know, you got to be over here, got to do this and go, all that kind of stuff. And uh, like the other day she told me, she, I mean, she's just looking. She said, I'm leaving. I said, you leave? Where you going? I got to get my toes done and my fingernails done. Uh, well, I don't know what to call. I said, yeah. I and said, I okay. I haven't done that in, in, in a quite a while because normally she used to do it all the time, but it would take too much time. So she bought a kit to do it for herself. And you smell that stuff all over the house. <laughs> I said, hey, why don't you go back to that lady and let her do that? You know what I'm saying? Well, man, I thought it was just going to be 25, 30 minutes. You know, two and a half hours later, I mean, you know, I mean, she comes back in. <laughs> What's this? I mean, I, I got to get involved. You know, <laughs> she calls me on the phone. She don't have to touch the phone. She just, you know, in, in the car. Jesse, would you open up the garage door and would you unlock the door uh, to get in the house? So I said, yeah. Open it. I don't want to have to reach in my she purse said, and I grab can't, the keys. I, can't, I don't want to reach in my purse and get the keys because I'm going to mess up my nails. Well, how you drive the car? Like this? <laughs> you know, yeah, you know? yeah. She's like this. Watch this, man. It's the wildest thing you ever seen. So I, was, I didn't get a jail. I got a regular yeah, manicure. Yeah, whatever so it was. So she comes in. 
I thought, well, I'm going to be nice. I open up the door and she gets out. She ain't praising God. She just got her, she got her hands up like this and, and walking with her feet on her, on her heels with her toes sticking up like this. And uh, so she comes in. She said, would you get my phone out of, the, uh, of my purse? I don't want to put my, I mean, I mean, so I got to go through all this for a while until they dry. Then I see it. And I'm thinking, how much money did I spend for that? <laughs> how much money? And she said, you didn't spend no money. I paid it myself. So, I mean, you know, so after a while, man, we watch it. it, it I watched a 30-minute program. I looked over there, and she's like, I said, uh, are they dry yet? I don't know. I can't touch them. <laughs> I got to wait. So, okay. They you know. were dry. But they were dry. But, but dry, I mean, dry she for wanted some that things, done. but not everything. Yeah. I mean, uh, and, and that, that's showing me fingers. That, that's what you did right there. Yeah, you know? See, this is how it was, you know. I'm not going to put my feet up here on the table. And, you know, every <laughs> once in a while, you know, when somebody does something so much, it makes you want to do that. I found myself watching the show like this myself. I and I got, I got the ugliest hands there. No, you don't. I get, get like nice this. hands. Oh, God. I, yeah. I got, look at how small these hands are. I believe when the Lord created me, there were two little hands on the floor. He said, put them on Jesse that we have no loss. <laughs> They're very strong, but they little hands. You know? And Chrissy's got the best. She's behind the cat. She got the smallest hands and the smallest Leave feet. That girl She's alone. a beautiful woman. She went and get her feet. <laughs> her toes done. And the lady went, oh, look at the baby feet. <laughs> I lost it. I just thought it was so funny. But, you know, women are funny about things. You just got to obey them. You just got to obey. And I said, that's fine. And uh, so we're talking about obedience. And I make it fun because let me tell you this. I'm, it's la when you're laughing, obedience is not easy. And sometimes it's just flat not fun. But God But rewards, it is rewarding. It God, really is. He rewards is. obedience. It is just such a blast. So I want to go a little bit further with this. And I'm making it funny. And you so lose you rewards when you yes. don't obey. You can't uh, yeah. expect. To be blessed when you don't obey God. A lot of people want the blessing, but they don't want to obey. Every right. blessing, every promise in the Bible is conditional. You meet the conditions, you get the promise. It's yeah. that's the way they, it they is. want God to bless them financially, but they won't sow seed. Right. Well, even a farmer's got enough sense to know that. I mean, if you don't sow any seed, he's not certainly not going to get a harvest. It just don't happen. See what yeah. I'm saying? You just those are the things that happen. In and life. it applies in the financial realm as well as in the social realm. When you right. sow love, you sow forgiveness, you sow kindness. You reap all of those things. I it's had a, a person ask me. See you know, principle. Ask me. They said, "Watch this." They said, "You know, I've been knowing you a long time. I've never seen you sick." I said, "Do you know why?" And, and there was a lady. She said, "No." I said, "I sow healing. I love to pray for people to be healed, but man." Because, see, if you sow healing, the reward or the harvest of healing is health. So I walk in health. And that's a blessing of the Lord. But it's because I saw, I saw, a lot of times I'm in my mind, anybody need a miracle here today? And I don't necessarily have to touch it. I can do a mass prayer. But you're sowing healing and you get health. Well, we sow finance, we get blessed. I mean, it's, it, 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 the seed reproduces after its kind. I like kind words. I don't like harsh words. And things of that nature, see? So I've learned to obey. Not all the time. I do miss it. Don't misunderstand me. I mean, we all have a, I used to get up on the wrong side of the bed. What side of the bed is that? So I, I would never have to, I would never get up on it if I knew what side it is. But you determine what you're going to do that day by how, sad to say, how you feel instead of how you believe. And what are you believing for today? Hmm. And maybe the reason why you're not receiving it is not because you have a lack of faith but you might have a lack of obedience. And that's what God using Sam to tell us, it's better to obey than to sacrifice. You know, but we've been taught to sacrifice a lot, and that's good, don't misunderstand it. But it's so much better if you obey. And when you obey, guess what? The Word of God comes to pass, not some of the time, all the time. I'll say this, and then we'll get close to the end of this. And I've said it so many times, but it's a very powerful statement. Never mix faith and time, because time will become your enemy. You see what I'm saying? Because if it didn't happen right away, you get angry, you get frustrated. I ain't believing this no more. And the devil said, hey, we stopped them in their tracks, you know. And the Bible said, don't deceive yourself. You know, I don't know why anybody would want to deceive themselves, because who's going to catch all the hell? You will, because you're deceiving yourself. It's just amazing to me. I never forget I had a preacher lady one time. She was pretty chunky, you know. Uh, and then I don't care if she's chunky. It don't make no difference to me. She said, I'm on a diet. I said, you are. She's eating donuts. You know, I'm, I mean, not one, two or three of them, you know. She said, but I'm drinking skim milk. 
And I thought, she said, it's not as fattening. Now that's deception. <laughs> that's just the, I said, why don't you just tell the truth? You know, uh, you know, why, why, you, you, yeah, you may be saving, quote, a few calories. <laughs> Maybe so, but it, it ain't going to show up. Because them donuts, son, I'm telling you, man, I mean, and they're good, but they're going to show up on the outside somewhere. See what I'm saying? You know, and they usually go to the back where you can't see them. That's, that, that's how that works, you know. But, I mean, and the reason why you lose weight on the diet, because you obey it. Just simply through, no, you're not eating that. No. And, I mean, I fight that. I've I fought my way all the time, you know. And Kathy said, you know, Jess, I got to say this. You don't eat a lot uh, at an entree. You know, where, and, but you and snack, you, and I love to snack. I enjoy snacking. It's such a blessing. And you go to lunch with people, you can watch how they like it. One time, not too long, we got a, a pizza place called Rotolo's. So, man, me and Kathy walk in there, and all of us, we, we had ordered some food. And in walks Luis and Christy. And, yeah, and I, I say, hey, why don't y'all sit with us? She works for you. Christy. You see Christy on Glorious Living. So, and Lu her husband's a really a great guy. He's, he's smiling all the time, man. And, I, you know, Luis can eat anything he wants. You know, he's, he's a bull of a man. He's strong. He said, I'll have this pizza. <laughs> Christy goes, I'll have a salad. I said, okay. So she gets a salad. They say, hey, it's a nice salad. Don't misunderstand me. <laughs> yeah. But I see Christy looking at Luis. <laughs> all of a sudden, she eat a salad. I'm going to take a piece of that. And then she start eating that, uh, his pizza. <laughs> Before you know it, I mean, I said, uh, because we were hogs, we had ordered two. We ordered if two. If you remember, not to it, eat right. both of them, but we wanted to we taste wanted them. We wanted to taste them. See what that tastes like, you know? Yeah, we we didn't plan to eat all. No, it was perfect. You never when planned to up, do that. She got to eat part of that second one, and we didn't feel quite so bad. But you know, after you've ate a nice salad, you still feel like a cow eating grass. You know what I'm saying? You want you want some substance. So you a little substance. Chrissy a cow? No, I, I didn't call you. I, didn't, I would never say that. You know what I'm saying? I go, That's not Brr. right. No, I would never That's say That's not nice. No, I didn't say that. But so Luis said, hey, you want some pizza? Because Luis is going to eat the pizza. You see what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, he is. And, he did, and she said, yeah, I'll take a piece. I mean, she didn't eat the whole pizza pie. Just eat a little piece here and there and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, and so we tried. It was a unique month there. They were trying all kind of different flavored pizzas and things. So we wanted to taste them. You know, and uh, so I, she said, well, we'll bring this part and put it in the refrigerator, you know, and we can eat it another day or something like that, you know. Well, you do, you know, that thing got a voice. I, got, I, that, I put it in the refrigerator, and that night I laid down, and uh, I must have been sleeping by two, and I woke up, and I heard that pizza voice. Hey. <laughs> it was way in the front, in the refrigerator. It wanted me to obey it. Come, get a piece of it. You, Kathy's not going to know. <laughs> Just come and get it. You know what I'm saying? And I said, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. Leave me alone. I'm trying to sleep. But, you know, food has a voice, you know. And I'd walk by the refrigerator, and I could just go and I could just hear it. You know, I said, no, you're not eating that. Now, you could eat it at, you know, lunchtime or something, but not at 3 o'clock in the morning. For God's sake, make it what you're going to do, go back to bed and sleep like a puppy and just enjoy yourself. And then you wonder why you can't put on that clothes the next morning. What happened? Well, the pizza blew up on you. That's what happened, you know. So you have to learn to obey. You understand what I'm saying? I'm obey making this as spirit. simple yeah. and I'm making it as funny as I can because obedience is not an easy thing because mm. you've got to go against yourself your to flesh. do it. Yeah. You've your flesh got to go pull, against yourself Always to pulling do it. in the wrong direction. That's right. You've got to make a decision to f make the right choice. Right, right choice. You and have if choices. you do, then you know what God will say. That's an obedient servant. That's an obedient son or daughter. Yeah. Let's bless them in the city. Amen. Bless them in the field. Bless them going in and bless them going out. Now, I'll say this and we'll close. And I, and I want to explain this. Have you ever walked by something? Might be in a mall. I don't know. You could just be out you know, in a park somewhere. And you look at something and you go, ooh, I sure like to have that. But you, but you didn't. You, but it's not, you, know, you, you wouldn't buy it or nothing like that. You know why? It is yours. It's God saying, he put something in you. To, he drew you to that. He said, now believe me for that, and I'll give that to you. Huh. I thought, you know what? I said, yeah, but you know, do I, uh, I don't need it, Lord. He said, it's not about need. I just want to be a blessing. How many times you told me when I bought you something, it may be expensive or nice, you'd say, it's not my birthday or it's not our anniversary. No, it's not a special day. I said, were well, you special? Oh, that's nice to say that. But no, there's been some times I've walked by something and I thought, man, I like that. I want that. Man, I'm not going to do that. Well, the Lord put the desire in my heart.
to want that so that I could use my faith so he could give it to me and get it to me. Listen, I know that sounds strange, but that's true. Delight yourself there from the Lord to give you the desires of your heart. You might, some of you ladies may be shopping. You walk past a, I don't know, a dress shop. Let me see a dress or I don't know, whatever you like. And you go, ooh, but that's a little expensive. And I'm, I ain't going to spend that much money on it. But, it. but it's on your mind. It's because the Lord put the desire. And what he's telling you to do is use your faith. If you use your faith, that'll be in your closet if it's a dress. I'll be a blessing to you. I'll honor you. You see what I'm saying? And I'm telling you, people don't realize that that's the most simplest thing, yet God works in simple things and he works in complex things. He just wants you to be a blessing. There's been times that you've seen me do it and I've seen you do it. Uh, we don't even know people. And all of a sudden I see Kathy go in a purse, pull out a 20 or something, sometimes a hundred, and walk up to this person and just say, here. I said, you know what? No, but the Lord told me to bless her. That's obedience. Yeah. Now, I like the way Kathy gives money. She gives money like the mob. It's amazing. She don't just, she folds it up. <laughs> Let me have your hand, man. I don't wave it in the air. No, and say, no, Look, I don't I'm do that giving neither. her I don't some do. money. But no, the way I she fold does, it. Like she's walking, uh, like in that movie casino, and she just, she slips it in <laughs> And I think, oh, Lord, Lord, of course, I know. I don't Nostra. think it's quite like that. <laughs> it's like that, you know. And, but it's just so funny to me, you know. But you know what? I do the same thing. Sometimes she says, why'd you do that? I said, the Lord told me to bless them. Yeah. And vice versa. She'll just do it, you know, just such a yeah. blessing of the Lord. Or sometimes she'll stop real abrupt and turn around. She said, I, I got to go bless that person. Like one time she bought a bunch of Chanel makeup stuff because, you know, whatever she needs. And all of a sudden she just said, I mean, spend, that stuff's expensive, you know, which is okay. And I, I, a lady that was a, probably makes a commission on I guess that's how they make their money. I don't know. And Dillard's is where it was. And Kathy just turned around and said, look, the Lord told me to bless you. That is some of the best words you can ever say to, to someone because you obeyed. They go, bless me. Man, no, you don't need to do that. No, no, it isn't about need. It's about obedience. And it, and it works not some of the time but all the time. I hope you enjoyed this today. And once again, partners, thank you for helping us preach this gospel literally all over the world. The Bible said when this gospel is preached for witness, he didn't say they have to receive it, right? but they must witness it. The Bible said the end shall come. That's Matthew 24, 14. Right. We'll read it. It will bless you. Until next time, this is Jesse and Kathy Plant saying we love you. We really do. We'll be praying for you. And thank you for the wonderful testimonies and for your faithful financial support. See you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. This media is copyrighted by Jesse Duplantis Ministries for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this media or of any pictures or accounts without Jesse Duplantis Ministries' consent is strictly prohibited.